Bismillah, salatu wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa I'm very pleased today to meet with you in another episode about the seal of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Remember last time we talked about a very important topic related to the love for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and how this love that the Muslim believer has for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is one of the great forms of worship and how we love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and we talk about two different types of love love that is uh, we call it permissible uh, encouraged uh, rewarded a love that has to be watched watched uh, revised let's say it in the minimum way today I'm going to talk about another aspect related to the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is his relationship with children. How the Prophet treated young people. Treated young people. Uh, I'm really decided the importance of this issue. Every issue in the life of Prophet Muhammad is of great importance. Uh, these issues that we'll be talking about later on as well. But uh, we in the world we talk about children rights. Why, in the first place, why are they raising this issue? Why we should talk about women rights, human rights, children rights, animal rights, why? Because the rights of those people, animal, of the universe, I mean, the environment, have been violated. <laughs> Therefore, you have to have some kind of regulations. Therefore, you uh, preserve these species, whatever, and uh, human beings should be treated in the, in, the, in, the, in the right manner. Although the regulations are made by people and they relate based on what they think should be done. Uh, Islam as a way of life did not leave any of these issues away. It has been part of the, in, in the heart of the Islamic teachings as a matter of fact. Because if you look back to the understanding of Islam, it is a huge umbrella term that governs life. Governance, life. And after, life, you see? So no system in the world could claim that. And this is why Islam by definition is submitting one's will willingly and uh, completely to the will of Allah. So there is guidance in every aspect. And I'll start with a simple story. How Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam treated children. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in Mecca, and he realized that many of his companions were persecuted, tortured, he was looking for an avenue for them, a place in which they may they may seek refuge, and where they could really practice their own religion in peace, and therefore they could develop in their own faith until the right moment comes where the Muslim state will start and they will find protection. So he sent some people to before that to Abyssinia. Habisha. Okay, to Habisha. And I talked about this issue but we'll talk about why the Prophet Sassanam selected Abyssinia in Africa. The continent where we came from. Okay. You should be very proud that this is the continent which preserved Islam for the first time, which gave refuge to the most righteous people on earth. When their own families rejected them, when their own tribe tortured them, they had no other place to go but to a Habesha, to a Syria. Ethiopia, it's part of Ethiopia and Eritrea in this area. So, Allahumma salam salam. Those people, when they heard about the advent of Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad yes. to Medina, the arrival, the migration of Prophet Muhammad to Medina, they migrated back. This is the column Ashab al Hijratin, the people of two migrations. They migrated twice. First to Abyssinia, to Habasha, then to Medina. They had children among them. And this is the attractive to me, the story is attractive to me because of a linguist. And some of those children acquired probably Amharic or Tigriya, the language that were spoken in 
they were mixing the children of Habasha, the senior. So they acquired, they became, they were bilingual. Okay, they were bilinguals who acquired another language beside Arabic. One of these girls, among them, nicknamed Umm Muhammad. She was called Umm Muhammad. And the Prophet himself was in the reception of those people. He went there to welcome them to Medina. He was really looking. There were no mobiles, no telephones, no fax machine, no telegraphs. He was anticipating their own arrival. So he was there. He wanted to be there to welcome them. So when they came and they start, he started hugging the kids and, and he met this little young girl. Her name was Abu Khalid. And some kids are very cute. All kids are cute, but some more cute than others. Really playful, joyful. Uh, so this probably was among those kids who had these qualities. She attracted the attention of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she would come and play with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with her father come to the Prophet and he would just make her smile and laugh with you. The Prophet has his own way of living children. One day he received clothes, you know, clothes mm -hmm. you know, and in the past we don't buy clothes in this way. We buy them in uh, what we call them uh, folded clothes mm -hmm. and we, we distribute them by meters. And there was a small piece and it was a very beautiful piece of cloth. And he said, today I'm looking for somebody to give him this piece of cloth. And he wanted to get it from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Very colorful, very nice. He looked around, he said, where is Umm Khalid? This small girl. Her father was very happy. Imagine that you are the father of Umm Khalid. He said, what can I do, O oh, Prophet of Allah? He said, bring Umm Khalid to me. Please bring her to me. He didn't have to tell him what she's what he's going to, to do. When she came, he wrapped the cloth around her and he said to her, Sana Umm um Khalid. Sana is not an Arabic word. It is probably an Amharic word. But the Prophet got it from that Girl, Sana, the beautiful. You see how he cared, and he remembered this small little girl. She's in the mind of Prophet Muhammad, in his heart. He was very much concerned about the community. And she was dancing around with the cloth around her. Very joyful. It's not any man on earth, it is the Prophet himself who's given her this very beautiful gift. Uh, when we look at this, and then when I hear this story, uh, I have children, some of you have children. Sometimes we give little time to our own children, claiming that we are busy. Because we're busy, we work sometimes from early in the morning until you come back. Uh, wake up, darling. <laughs> okay. Uh, late in the evening and you think you're busy and sometimes you don't think of your neighbor's kids or your relative's kids very close relatives sometimes to you but the Prophet Sallallahu was caring about everybody including those young ones and he gave special attention not only in terms of Salaamu Alaikum but in terms of spending time in terms of language He's telling that child, and we know this is linguistic and code switching. When you change your language sometimes from one language to another, from one code to another, it has a meaning. Here it has a different meaning for me as a linguist. Now you're my friend. You know Sana, I know Sana. Other people don't know what we're talking about. They say you make some kind of strong connection. And the Prophet ﷺ was among the best communicators in the earth. Allah gave him the power of speech. The, go, the power of communication. The power of communication. And this is a small incident in the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And imagine, and every time I think of myself saying, if I were that girl, what would happen to me? All my life I would keep that piece of cloth. I would never wear it. 
You see? And this is probably what happened to that daughter, that, that child. Okay? She kept that peace for all her life. Because some of the companions when the Prophet said would give them a gift, they say, I want to be wrapped. That would be my shard, my kafan when I die, to the extent. You see, that because this is not from any human being, it is from the Prophet himself. Another occasion tells you how the Prophet was received by the people of Medina when he migrated. And how children played a very important role in his life, in your life, in my life, and in the life of every Muslim, not every Muslim, every human being. Because this deal is affecting the whole world, has changed the whole world, and the whole world will never go back to what it was. From the moment that Muhammad declared that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. This, when the Prophet came to Medina, his companions left everything behind. Many of them were very wealthy, many years. Okay? But they left everything behind. Some members of their family were left behind, either against their will or based on their own will. Some even uh, left their own wives because they didn't want to become Muslims. See? I don't believe you. If you don't want to become Muslim, I am not going to continue with you. They were ready to sacrifice everything for the sake of Allah. So when they came to Medina, everybody of the people of Ansar of Medina were trying to help whatever they could. Offer accommodation, some food, whatever. Uh, there was one lady, her name was Umu Salim. She was a very poor widow. She was a poor widow. Along with her children, she had a number of children. So she realized that everything was giving something to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and she was not giving. Those people didn't live for Prophet Muhammad for a long time. They are not like us, have read his seer and you know the details of his life. But they believed in him as the great messenger of Allah. When they saw him, they realized that the radiation that comes from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu overwhelmed them with love, with respect, with guidance. And this is why we were ready to give anything. Their lives. They gave their lives for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for supporting his Prophet. So this lady left her home. Nothing to do with the Prophet. When she was looking at her house, she saw her son. She remembered children. But she saw her son, the, the, the oldest among her sons, was 10 years old. Very handsome. Then who will be? I'll give him to Prophet Muhammad. See, they were ready to give their own children. Imagine this. Always be like Prophet Muhammad. And this is an orphan. She took him to Prophet Muhammad. See, what do you think? She said, I'd love to be with Prophet Muhammad. He walked along with his. Mother to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and she said, "Salam alaykum ya Rasulullah." Salam alaykum ya Rasulullah. Allahumma salli wa sallim ya Rasulullah. The Ansar, the supporters of the people of Medina, every one of them gave what they could give, but they had nothing to give. This is the most precious human being on earth for me. This is the most precious commodity, people's commodity, a human being. I'm giving him to serve you. The Prophet didn't need anybody to serve him. Everybody would like to stand him. Not to mention a 10 year old boy would be a burden. You know, children? <laughs> there would be a burden. Okay? Everybody wants to help Prophet Muhammad. Among the greatest of the companions, Abu Bakr Siddiq, and all the companions of Prophet Muhammad. He had a number of people who were helping him as well, very close to him. <coughs> he looked around and said, I want him to be your servant. The Prophet didn't turn, didn't want to turn this woman away and break her heart. 
she wanted. He, he knew that she was very sincere. And if he would say, no, I have many people to serve, what would happen to her? It would break her heart. Even the heart of that child was very joyous to be in the presence of Prophet Muhammad That one day he will be called, when children play around and say, so I say my father, I say my mother, my uncle. Man. Who, what he said? I am working with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa You see how proud he will be? You know who that child is? Anas ibn Malik. Anas ibn Malik. And she said, this is my son, Anas, to serve you. To serve you. Look how Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam treated Anas ibn Malik. Taban, Anas ibn Malik is called now, labeled, Prophet's servant. When you mention the name, the servant of the Prophet Muhammad Hassan, everybody knows. Like the Adan caller of Prophet Muhammad Hassan, who is it? Who is the Adan caller? Bilal. The whole world knows about him. Here, when you say the servant of Prophet Muhammad Hassan, it is Anas ibn Malik. So, great honor. Great honor. This is why many Muslims name their children Anas. Even some of the organizations, he would have one of the greatest, uh, the largest orphanages, orphan organizations, charity organization, called Anas. Named after Anas, because he was an orphan himself. Okay. So, this young boy was the Prophet Sallallahu And look, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they asked him, how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam treated you? He said they served the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for 13 years. For 13 years until he was 23. Did he stop serving the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 23? No, the Prophet died. And he went to the service of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his da'wah. Or came for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the sake of the teaching that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought. He never said to something that he did, Why did you do it? You shouldn't have done that. How many, do, how many times do you say that in the day to our children? <laughs> they get tired of it. They're not affected by it anymore. So they, they turn the, extent, the, the extension that they don't care anymore. Because every time we shout at them, stop doing this. I didn't do it. You should have done this a different way. And he said, he never said something to something I, I didn't do. Why didn't you do this? And he gave us another occasion when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to see how this young man lived with Prophet Muhammad and how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi brought him up, educated him, how he served the Prophet. This young man, he said, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent me to do something for him one day. Then I saw the children playing. I started playing for with them. I forget. What the Prophet <laughs> sent me for, just like any other child. What would you do for that? You see, you like those kids better than me? You like playing, like playing better than Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Millions of people would like to serve me. And now, look what you're saying. You're a careless kid. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? This is reported by Anas. He said, after some time, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came after me. He patted me on the back. He said, oh, I forget the Prophet of Allah. And he smiled. He, he, he smiled. He just wanted to teach him. Because anybody could do it for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam treated those young children. And I'll tell you about something very important with Anas. He said, one day I came late to my mother. He's been serving the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he came late. He said, Anis, why are you late, my son? He said, it is the secret of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imagine a child, 11 years, 12 years, 13 years old, child, said, it's the secret of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imagine your kid coming to your home, and he said, what are you? He said, I was with my grandfather. I did something for him. What is it? He said, I see a tear to my father. Are you going to take me? He said, I'm your mother. You shouldn't keep secrets away from home. But she never said that. What did she say? What did she say? She said, yes. My son 
It is the secret of the Prophet Muhammad You shouldn't tell it to any. You think it's a bad secret? No. Okay? But that child, because the Prophet Sallallahu didn't ask him to tell others, he was not ready to tell others. We want to see how children love Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu before looking at how he loved him. It is expected. But you see how, how he, those kids were living with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how, they, how he loved them, how they respected him, how they served him, how they were ready to sacrifice for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because my brother's love in its own greatest form is what's linked to Allah. And that love is reciprocal. It's two-way. Though they feel the love of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu for them, and nobody could reach the love of Prophet Muhammad because it's a love of a Prophet. No matter how much we love Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu we will not reach the level of how he loves us. And remember the hadith we talked about last time, last time. <coughs> when he said, what if I have seen my own brothers? May Allah make us among the brothers of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu The Prophet one day was making salah. And he's the leader of the community. He's the leader of the community. The greatest community on earth. No community would be better than the community of Prophet Muhammad Because he's been nominated by Allah to be the best among the prophets. And his followers are the best among the followers of the prophets. And the best on earth after prophets are the followers of the prophets. This is why Abu Bakr Siddiq is the best among all humanity other than the Prophets. And the Prophets, you know, Abu Bakr Siddiq. This is why Abu Bakr. This name is very uh, common in, in Africa. Abu Bakr. You see? You could hardly find a single family without Abu Bakr. Sometimes two, three, four, five, six Muhammads. Muhammad Awal, Muhammad Usani. Muhammad <laughs> al You see, you see, because they loved the Prophet and his companions so much. Now, sometimes we call our kids non Arabic names, non Muslim names, which is very sad. Which is very sad. So the Prophet was leading the prayer. And he was making, making what? Sujood. He was prostrating. And the companions were running. After him. But one of the sujood took him too long. Longer than usual. Longer than usual. When the salah finished, not everybody of the companions would dare to ask. Not everybody. But one of them was outspoken. He wanted to know, not out of uh, being rude or impolite. No, he just wanted to know. Because the Prophet is there for them to learn from, to get guidance. And they were in full knowledge of the details of the life of Prophet Muhammad No human being on earth had no, no, I mean, the life of Prophet Muhammad is exposed in a way that no other human being on earth would have that. Would Revealed everything in his life because he's a role model. So he came and said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, with a smile, you made a sujood that was too long. We thought that you have passed away on the That means it was too long. The Prophet smiled. He said, It is a very easy matter. You see, my son, Al Hassan, his grandson, when I make, was making sujood, he climbed my back. Allahumma <laughs> salli you see, he took a lot of love for Muhammad. He took him. I mean, no matter what we say, Allah he will not give this prophet what Allah expected him. Well, this is why Allah said to him in the Quran about him, You have acquired the greatest of best manners. And this is the, the this was the greatest praise by Allah for Prophet Muhammad. So, he would smile to his companion, something very easy. My son, Al-Hassan, climbed my back, and I didn't want to disturb him. 
He could climb down at any time he wanted. You make a sujood, you make a tasbih, and I'm teaching you here. He didn't say this to them. But they listen to me. He could have said, I am teaching you how to treat children. He didn't say, he practiced that himself. A child climbing your back. Those great men sliding behind you, waiting for you to say, Allah Akbar. But they were making such words. They were in the best position in front of Allah. He didn't torture them. He didn't give them hard time. No. He gave them the best of time to be with Allah. And that child was a reason for them to enjoy that moment with God. You see? So this is why this is another incident how the Prophet was to teach It was reported that the Prophet would take his granddaughter. Her name was Umama, the daughter of Zainab, okay, one of his daughters. And he would carry the child with him. Make a ruku, make a and the community is behind him. And he's carrying a little girl in his son. Just to, to, to see how the Prophet was dealing with children. And now we talk about children's rights. Because we are in a world where children are roasted in the oven. The resistance, raped by the owner, caretakers, sometimes fathers, uncles. We know this. Molested. Even buried alive, you know this? Infanticide has not disappeared. Who was the one who liberated children, little girls, from being buried alive? Prophet Muhammad. And they are killed nowadays. You know, in China, more than one million young girl is killed in different forms. Thanks to the new technology, because for the we call it one child uh, policy, you can have only one child. Everybody wants to have a boy. No, one boy. If it's one, if it's a child only, I need a boy. Why, daughter? Need a boy. Why girls? You see. And Allah spoke about those in the Quran. وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَى ظَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدًا وَهُوَ كَبِيرٌ يَتَوَارَى مِنَ الْقَوْمِ مِنْ سُوءٍ مُشْرِكٍ I am sukhu ala hunin, am yadusu turat. Allah is really explaining the situation of the people of Quraysh. Because the Prophet said, you cannot do that. Wa idha al mawudat wa su'ilat, bi ayyi dhabbi, utilat. When this very alive girl would be questioned in their judgment, for what reason have you been killed? Since you were arrested. Okay? And they would be, inshallah, among the people of Paradise. Why have you been killed? For what reason? And who would be the judge? Allah will be innocent. Okay? So, Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this takes place nowadays in the world. Thanks to the ultrasound technology. You can tell. And everybody knows this here. It's a boy or a girl. I don't know to look at that. Who cares? It's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, when it's a boy, they keep it. When it's a girl, and you can not know that unless it's in uh, like seventh month, if Monty could tell you exactly for sure, they would. So, miscarriage will take place. Okay? It is a form of, they call it infanticide. This is killing. This is not a portion. This is killing. And sometimes in remote areas where there is no such technology, when women give birth, Little girl. I don't I don't think of a mother who would kill her daughter. No. It's usually the father or the family. The pressure. And it's girl. They wanted a boy. And who raised the banner of human rights, of children's rights? A long time ago. Allah said in the Quran, وَلَا تَقْتُلُ أَوْلَادَكُمْ خَشْيَةً مِنْ لَاقْ Don't kill them because of poverty. نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُمْ وَيَّهُمْ We give you sustenance before them and we'll give you sustenance as well. See, this is just, 
glimpses of the life of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and how he treated children. We could continue for the whole day. Every, every moment a new incident would come to my mind and how the Prophet وسلم, was treated children. This is why he was very much beloved by everybody in his community, even by animals. And if we have time, one day we'll talk about how the Prophet وسلم, treated animals. Even inanimate, inanimate items were moved to love Prophet Muhammad He reported the Prophet that before I came a Prophet, there was a rock in Mecca. Whenever I pass by that rock, there is a sound that comes, As-salamu alaykum ya Rasulullah. Don't you think that the mountains know Prophet Muhammad Wallahi, they know. Prophet Muhammad The land that he walks on knows Prophet Muhammad The animals that he passed by anyway know Prophet Muhammad These are some just incidents in the life of Prophet Muhammad where his love for children was expressed through practice, not through talk. And end with a very important incident tells you the humbleness of Prophet Muhammad When you meet somebody who is a dignitary or somebody with a high position, you come there, whatever, you expect it to be like that. But when a child, you sit back to them, you speak to them, you whisper in their ears, they whisper in their ears, you talk to them, you give them something, you start crying. This is something interesting. The Prophet ﷺ one day was walking from his masjid along with one of his to be companions, better, one of the great Arab leaders. He was a priest and he was the king of his own tribe. His father was the most, among the most uh, generous people among the Arabs that can say that. But he is exemplary for his generosity. His father was not a Muslim. His, his name was the Adi ibn Hatim al His father Hatim al was exemplary for his generosity, but he didn't meet with Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> and Adi was like his father. He was a great leader, a very generous leader, respectable leader, but he was very learned, educated, highly educated, and he was a priest. He was a Christian at that time. He came to Medina. It's a very long story. For a purpose. And the Prophet وسلم, took him by hand. Give me your hand, brother. And he said, Come to me into my house. On the way, when they were walking, little girl stopped the Prophet وسلم, and said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, I want to speak to you. Imagine you're walking with a dignity. Somebody you hope greatly that you will become a Muslim, a great leader of his tribe. Him, girl, playing around on the dust with her hair <laughs> and everything, and she's coming. Say, Oh, Prophet of Allah, I want to speak to you. I need you for a word. Imagine yourself with somebody say, I'll talk to you later on. <laughs> Go go play. The Prophet said, Oh, then, could you give me a minute to talk to this girl? <laughs> Adi looked at him and said, because Adi was the king, and he thought this man wanted to be the king of the Arabs, and he was in control. He said, this, this is not the behavior of a king, not a human being, an ordinary human being, impossible. He, he couldn't marry him, and he didn't know the Arab. That time they were burying girls alive. You, know? you need to have that at the back of your mind. When you get a girl, you better hear, alive. And now look at this man. It's not even a boy, it's a girl. <laughs> and he said to him, I live in this great kingdom, standing, waiting for him to finish what she needs from Prophet Muhammad. We don't know what she said to the Prophet and what the Prophet said to her. That is not really our. I mean, it has reached a level of kindness. This is how we love children. He had to blame children for loving Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Please stop this uh, place and listen to your own 
questions. We have many beautiful questions about time. I don't know if you could, this uh, publication would come with English. Beautiful questions. Is there a question that's beautiful? <laughs> there are some ideas. <laughs> the English language has developed in a way that uh, <laughs> has allowed <laughs> some of these collocations to take place. Okay? Let's go to your questions if you have anything in mind. And uh, I prefer questions related to the Sira part of Muhammad but we could take questions uh, from other than uh, the Sira part of Muhammad Everything, any question related to Islam is related to Prophet Muhammad So, the time when I went to the Quran, I want to speak to the Prophet, the king didn't miss. No, you see, the king was astonished. The Ibn was astonished. And he really said, this is reported by Adi himself, the Greek Muslim. Okay? It's a very long story. Inshallah, when we finish with Syria, we might even talk about some of the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And how the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the character of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the teachings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have eliminated their lives, have changed their own world perspective. This man changed completely. But he looked at him and said, how could this cannot be a human being? This cannot be a king with such kind of manners in Arabia at the time, even nowadays. Because he thought that this man is competing with us kings. He wanted to be a greater king. Then he became Muslim later on. This was one of the reasons, two or three reasons, he became Muslim. But this was one of the reasons. Before Prophet Muhammad would speak to him and say, Oh, you have crucifixion, you have uh, three gods, and he didn't say anything to him. He just, with his manners, realized that he has thought. Okay, that's enough for me. That's enough for me. So I, cannot take that. I, mean, uh, I only have something to comment based on the love of children to the Islam and the Islam and women. It is stated in many of these, in some instance, that one of us, Rasul Salam and Salam, sent a battalion, if I may say, a group of business to fight against the Muslim group. He order the leader of the, 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 the his companion not to not to kill the children and the women. For this, I had this separate okay. uh, Now we talk about enemies' rights. <laughs> when you have an enemy, do they have rights in this world? We talk about the United Nations, the Security Council, Human Rights Watch. Nonsense! We talk about how even enemies have rights in Islam. How the Prophet practice that against his own. Here we talk about children in your mm -hmm. Now we talk about even the enemies of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They have very important rights that have to be maintained and never violated. Zakallah Khaybar. Anything else? So we want to call it for an end today. And may Allah reward you. We'll meet inshallah another time and continue talking about the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this very nice, great moment in the day of Jum'ah uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 